When was the last time you had drugs? Yeah, six months ago. Six months ago, okay. And what, what were you using then? Uh, cocaine. Cocaine? All right. The dogs, I mean, he's good, but he's just not that good to pick up saying six months or a year ago. So we're going to grab his bags and take him in for a baggage search. Auckland International Airport is the second busiest airport in Australasia, and with a large flow of travellers, custom staff must always be on the lookout for signs of potential drug smugglers. We just cut the air bridge to screen uh, the flight from Incheon to Korea. You know, I like to keep passengers on their toes and, um, yeah, see what we can get. Waldo picks up on the scent he's trained to find. Like a hairy heat seeker, he homes in on a tired traveller's back pocket. Wait there, stand still. Wally, find. Find. So, mate, I was going to have a chat to this officer here. Yeah, when was the last time you used drugs? About six months ago, sir. What was it? Uh, probably a little bit. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. They always say it was six months ago, you know, a year ago, but it'd be more recent than that. The dogs, I mean, he's good, but he's just not that good to pick up saying six months or a year ago. Customs officer Nathan lets the man and his partner continue to the baggage hall. All right, man. Thanks for your day. Cool. Thank you. Brad allows Waldo to reset before rechecking the man. He indicates on the same back pocket. When was the last time you had drugs? Oh, I answered these questions before. We can... Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want you to answer them now to me, as opposed to the, to the officer. Six months ago. Six months ago. Okay. And what, what were you using then? Uh, the same as I said before. Yeah, I actually haven't cocaine. spoken to the officer, mate. So um, you need to talk to me. Uh, cocaine. Cocaine. All right. Um, I've got a very similar response from the dog again. Um, so I've had a chat to him. He's given me the same answers. I'm still not happy. So we're going to grab his bags and take him in for a baggage search. When asked to open his locked bag. The man says he's lost the keys. Is that a key you're looking for, like a lock? Yeah, a green key. Green key, yeah. A supposedly lost key won't deter customs from doing their job. Brad brings out a padlock's worst enemy. Apart from this, customs officer Jessica doesn't find anything out of the ordinary in the man's bags. Her challenge is to dig deeper and find what Waldo smelled. Do you want to explain to me why that happened? Um, Why you think that happened? Yes, it could have happened from New Year's. New Year's, yeah. New Year's Eve was two weeks ago. He may have snorted and been sorted. We do know for a fact that drugs stay in your system for weeks on end, so... I mean, the indication could be anything from they've had it there, it's now gone, or it could even be the fact that it's seeping out of his pores. It's also possible that the man used his credit card to cut cocaine, which explains why Waldo was so interested in his back pocket where his wallet was. To be absolutely sure, customs staff run other checks. But all this card has been used for is making purchases at high interest rates. After thorough checks, the man and his partner pack their bags to leave. Drugs are never worth it. No result in this instance. However, it was fantastic work by Waldo. He um, has identified two people out of the entire flight to look at. Hopefully they'll think twice about doing drugs next time. Just before midnight in Wellington City, police dog team Stu and his canine comrade Link have been called out to inspect late-night illegal art exhibits. Um, a couple of guys have done some tagging on the wall behind us and left, so we'll see if we can track to where they are and tie them into the tagging. Yep. Yeah, it's the way it stinks too. The paint hasn't even formed a skin, so the taggers have just finished. Looks like Link is in luck. Six. Good boy. Almost straight away, Link picks up on a scent. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Good dog. Good boy. Good boy. The silent, dry streets should be perfect for tracking, but Link suddenly hits a wall. Thousands of feet through the day have thrown him off course. There's still quite a bit of scent, obviously, from today's shoppers, what have you. Dog still has a little bit of trouble picking out or discriminating other scents. Stu takes Link back to a more central location to try and reboot the sniffer system. Got lost it at the moment. I'm just going to go back to that main intersection and cast it a little bit more methodically. Meanwhile, iCar police have found two guys in classic homeboy costume, although for now they're denying any involvement. But if Link lives up to his name, he can make a direct connection between the graffitied wall and the two guys. It will be the evidence needed to solve the crime. I mean, it's just great for, for when it goes to court or anything like that. So it's purely the dog's nose. Going over the same ground, Link finally signals he's found the scent from the scene of the graffitied wall again. Oh, good boy. Good boy. I overshot that one, didn't I? Like a toothy torpedo, Link stays on course, 
nosing up the alleyway and straight to the waiting police and two suspects. Targets confirmed, Link has done a great job for police tonight. It's game over for the two young men. What do you do for a job? Studying art. You're studying art? Yeah. What a coincidence, eh? What sort of art do you study? Oh, some digital painting art, some computers. Digital painting and, and taking on walls. No, yeah. some painting. Both men are now art yeah. history. They were taken back to the station, where the 19-year-old was charged and convicted of willful damage. His buddy was not charged in relation to the graffiti. And the only tagging those boys should be doing after this is having electronic tags around their ankles. Hey, bud. Having tracked and caught some taggers, Wellington Delta dog team Stu and Link are now on to their next job of the night. We just off to a domestic violence job. An informant's called us and said that her partner has assaulted her by punching her in the face a couple of times. Straight after that, she's called us and he's legged it from the address. It's a violent crime, but Link couldn't care less. Blissfully unaware of human behaviour, he's focused on his favourite fun. Good boy. Good boy. With a number of cents in the air, the one that gets up Link's nose is along some railway tracks. We could afford the tracks for the straight. But this time, the straight and narrow doesn't appear to be doing the trick. Not having too much luck locating where he's actually gone. So Stu and Link beat their feet back to square one to start casting round again. A lot of the times, these guys won't go far. They'll hunker down on either a neighbouring property or their own property. Stu's plan bears fruit. Link picks up on the man's scent again, and this time he's off like a furry freight train. Good boy, Link. Good boy. Hey, Mr. Come out of the bush. Good boy. Come out of the bush now. Get out of here. Get out. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Come out here now. Come towards the light. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Show me your hands. Put your hands on your head. Come out here. Not wanting a confrontation with Link, the man chooses to do as he's told. You're under arrest for male assaults female, do you understand? <laughs> Good boy. Yeah. Yeah, here. It's unlikely he was just stargazing. Link's excited behaviour is all Stu needs to hand this guy over to backup police. Yeah, it's really good trick. Dog worked really well. As the crow flies, it's about 30 metres from where he was hiding to the address. So he's basically done a big loop, hidden behind the address, and hope would go away, I think. Good boy. The man was taken to the station where he was charged, convicted, and sentenced to six months supervision, 40 hours community service, and, like Link, a lifetime in the doghouse. Given that it's a domestic violence, I think it's good to, uh, good to have him in the cells tonight.